Okay, okay. Hello, hello, everybody. How are we all doing today? Welcome back to the stream. Let's uh, jump on over. Okay, then. How are we all doing, people? I hope we're doing well. Hope you all had a great weekend and a fantastic Sunday. Hope you're having a fantastic Sunday evening. And uh, yeah, I've just had a, a great Sunday lunch myself. So I'm, I'm feeling good, ready to, to rock. Been looking forward to doing this stream all week, really. Fortunately, not really had that much time this week. So yeah, really looking forward to, uh, to getting stuck in here. So, um, what we're going to be doing today is we're flying from Gatwick in London. We're going to be flying to Innsbruck in Austria. Uh, should be pretty cool. Uh, we've got quite a bit of ATC on the moment, whether that'll be the case once we actually log on. Uh, we shall see. Uh, we've had a bit of bad luck with, uh, with ATC as of late. But uh, yeah, so we're going to fly from Gatwick to Innsbruck. Um, it's pretty snowy in Innsbruck at the moment, so it's going to be some pretty, pretty nice scenes flying in there. Um, but without further ado, anyway, let's uh, let's jump into the airport at Gatwick and uh, and let's see let's see how things are looking on Ival. So I'm just getting my uh, bits and bats here together for the uh, ATC. Making my notes here on my notepad. On my notepad here on my desk. <laughs> Making some notes for ATC. Uh, let's get logged in as well to Ival. Beautiful. So let's see. We do have, uh, yeah, we've got some uh, some controllers on. Nothing for Gatwick though, unfortunately. There was earlier. Let's just see if we've got any coverage. Yeah. So unfortunately, my of course my bad luck means that the uh, the Gatwick controller is actually logged off now. Yeah, they really seem to love flying from like South End on Live Out for some reason. But hey, I wanted to check out this airport anyway. Um, they've, there's been a few updates to this uh, freeware airport. So uh, yeah, let's check it out anyway. It's looking pretty fine from these screenshots so far. So far. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be flying over into Innsbruck. There is some ATC coverage over in Central Europe coming over into Austria so uh yeah we should have uh, quite a bit of coverage as we uh, we make our way over there so I'm going to put in in the pinned comments as well I will put a link to uh my aircraft on Ival And uh, yeah, you'll be able to, to follow along and see the flights on a map. Okie doke. Right then. So uh, let's get things set up. So we've got no controller here. So um, yeah, we don't really need to speak to anyone for now. Uh, but let's, uh, let's have a look around here. So let's get the time and date set up. I don't want to fly in the dark. Um, so we're going to actually make it daytime. Uh, let's say... Let's say about... Mm, what? Half two? Something like that. And then we'll turn the live weather on, of course. See what the weather's like in Gatwick currently. Oh. Right. Okay, it's looking uh, pretty fine in Gatwick. Fair bit of low uh, low hanging cloud actually looks pretty uh, pretty spectacular. 
Okay. Let's get things started up anyway. We're at gate 25, as you can see. This beautiful scenery has got uh, lots of detail for us. Okay. So let's get the batteries turned on and the external power. If you actually go outside here, you can actually hear... So this sound is like... Um, it's a self-test for... I can't actually remember what it is specifically, but it's some kind of uh, ventilation that's self-testing there that you can hear as you start up the aircraft. Which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll turn our nav lights on and uh, we'll get all our seatbelts on and, and whatnot for the passengers once they get on board. Let's also turn on the crew supply. We'll set the ideas to a line. Now, they've added this this light here as well, which is a nice little addition. That's been a long time coming, I think. And we'll get the, uh, the temperature pumped up here in the cabin and the cockpit. And we'll just turn a couple of lights on just so our displays are a bit brighter and we can kind of see what's going on. All right. So let's turn this up and uh, I'm going to just turn these off. We'll turn that flight director on though. There we go. And that flight director as well. Change that to uh, Q and H. And we'll turn this on as well. And there we go. Okay, cool. So let's uh, jump on then down to our MCDU. And we will get things uh, set up. So... Uh, let's see if I can remember how to do the sim brief integration here. So, uh, so we need to go to init, I believe. I need to request. So we've got a flight plan details here. Echo Golf Kilo Kilo to Lima Oscar Whiskey India, and. Uh, Fuel on board is going to be 9.5 tons, which uh, doesn't actually match up with the flight plan. Oh, that's the current fuel on board, isn't it? All right, so let's uh, yeah, let's just uh, review. What else do we do here? Uh, 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 uh. I think that's all we need to do. So yeah, we go back here and then we go to our performance weight and balance. And then we can load it in. So block fuel is 6.9 tons, which is correct as per the uh, flight plan. So we'll refuel that. And that should have changed it there. Yeah, it has indeed. And we'll go over to the weight and balance. So we'll set up our payload as well. And that's looking good. Okie dokie. Captain Jakes, I see you. Thank you very much for the like. Hope you're well, mate. Good to see you in here. All right, and we'll jump on then back to our init page and we can request our routing. So hopefully, fingers crossed this works. It is, it's been a little bit wonky for me the last few times I've tried it, but hopefully it should work okay. Uh, so it's inserted the init page correctly. Hopefully it'll do the rest. Just while it's doing that, I'm going to pop this guy out and bring him down here. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually still doing anything. Uh, we've got our flight plan in. Looks like we're good. All right. Oh, it's still going. It's still going. <laughs> Is it? I don't know, man. I thought it did this real quick. Anyway, while it's still doing that, we'll just browse this and just make sure this is all correct. So we've got these new arrows and the flight number up here, which is um, a new little addition. We've got some arrows left and right as well. 
they don't do anything right now. Um, so let's just browse through our flight plan here and just make sure it all looks correct. So heading out to the east. Then, yeah, just heading slowly to the southeast and then taking a turn on down towards Austria and then uh, over the east side and then back in. Yeah, so that looks about right to me. Great stuff. All right, so let's just uh, go up to our departure and set our departure route. So we are uh, hope, well, there's no ATC on here, so we don't have to hope for a runway. We can just fly whatever runway we want. Let's see. I'm just bringing up uh, IVAL to see if any controllers have actually just recently logged on. This is where we are. Sorry, no, we're not. We're at he that's Heathrow. We're here. This is, in fact, our plane right here, this green. Yeah, so unfortunately, we just missed out. There was a controller on here earlier, but uh, as you can see, there's plenty of controllers on over Europe, so we should, uh, we should catch uh, some ATC on the approach. Uh, Innsbruck is down here, so they've got, uh, they've got center controllers on, but no uh, approach controllers, but... Not a big issue. A lot of these uh, airports as well here are uh, extremely busy. Anyways, uh, we are going to depart from runway 26 left. And we're going to use the Odvik 2 Zulu departure. Which is not there. Oh. Oh, it actually says on the flight plan, Odvik 2 Zulu is invalid for runway 26 left. So why did it why did it offer it to me then? Interesting. So we'll work out a uh, slightly different departure then. Let's just uh jump on over over here. And uh we'll bring it up uh Flight planning here, so this is the Ovic to Zulu, which we don't want. Uh, so let's go from runway 26 left. Uh, let's see which one we want here. So we want one that goes sort of roughly out to the south east. Uh, uh, uh. In fact, I'll tell you what I might need to do is I might just need to um, I just need to refresh this flight plan. So if we go back in here and then edit and we can set this to a slightly later time. Yeah, so I'm not sure why it offered me that. Uh, so now it's just say go direct to Odvik. Okay, well, we'll do that. We'll go direct to Odvik, Odvik um, which is fine. And uh, we'll just stick with the rest of the flight plan just to uh, to keep it simple there. We've already fired fly our flight plan with, uh, with IVAL, so we don't need to... Uh, don't want to confuse things too much. So let's jump on back over to our cockpit and uh, we'll just erase this uh, departure route I'll just clear this off at the bottom here as well okay cool um, we'll set up our arrival into Innsbruck momentarily uh, sorry when we're in the air all right so we'll go to our in it B page and we'll add in our zero fuel weight and our zero fuel Center of gravity, our block fuel is 6.9 tons, so we'll stick that in here, and that is going to calculate our fuel prediction. On top of that, we will have a uh, wind component of uh, plus 15, so that's going to give us a slight tailwind, I think. 
There we go. So we've got a tailwind of... I'm sure I just put in 15. 0, 1, 5. Okay. Maybe I just need to put... I'm sure I just... It's not letting me actually put in 15. Interesting. All right, let's... Uh, bear me one moment. Yeah, it's a bit strange that. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Maybe if we press the plus and then we put 15. There we go. Okay, beautiful. So that's our fuel prediction then. Um, we've got 1.7 tons for our alternative. And uh, yeah, everything else looks quite good. Uh, about an hour and 36 minutes. And about 3.4 tons when we arrive. So everything's looking good there. Let's go and do our performance page. Uh, for some reason it says eight left. Uh, that's because I didn't insert this, did I? Right, there we go. Okay, so we'll insert two seven left. And we'll go flaps one, flex to 66. Transition is, is it 5,000 or 6,000? It is 6,000, of course. All right, so transition is 6,000. V1 is going to be 132. Rotate is going to be 133. And our V2 is going to be 137. Okay, so that is the box all set up. Uh, our irises have now aligned. So we can uh, go ahead and, uh, and get things started up. So let's uh, get our APU going. There we go, and we'll turn on our fuel pumps as well. We could probably do an APU fire test as well. I always forget to do these, really. I forget that this is actually something that is implemented, but you can actually do a bit of... Uh, let's, uh, let's do it this way. Which is beautiful. Let's uh, just test the engine one and engine two. Okay, lovely stuff. We can test our enunciator lights as well, which is always a nice thing to look at. <laughs> and uh, you can see them all uh, lit up down here as well. Very cool. All right. So let's uh, leave those on. So the APU is now starting up. We've got our flap open. Uh, whilst that is starting up, let's see what else we can do. We can arm the speed brakes. We can lock the cockpit door now because we're going to move. Make sure rudder trim is at zero, which it is. Um, we, yeah, that's about it. All we can do, really. We're just going to wait until uh, till we get moving. Uh, I'm just going to set this up as well. So this is one, two, two, decimal eight. Uh, as we are going to be on Unicom. Yeah, still no controllers on close by. Uh, well, there is close by, but not serving this airspace. That's that. And we can turn a predictive wind shear on. Might as well turn the old weather radar on as well. And I'm just going to turn that brightness of it down because that can be quite obnoxious to look at. All right, so just waiting for our APU to become available. So our APU is actually available now. So uh, we could put auto brake to max as well. So let's uh, turn on our beacon light then. We'll turn on our APU bleeds and we can now turn external power off because we're now uh, independent of external power. Look at this. Uh, look at these conditions here in uh, Gatwick. 
Super cool. I can also hear another aircraft close by. Not sure where, though. <laughs> I know, obviously, we are on IVAL, so we should expect to see other players around, but I just... Not these two, because these two don't have the lights on. I don't know. Anyways, um, let's set the Q&H as well. So that's set to 102.5. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get moving. So we'll just speak to our ground crew here. And hopefully this, uh, this guy should uh, make a move. Ready for pushback. Uh, I can't remember what you actually say to this guy. Request pushback. Yo, Callum, welcome to the chat. Hope you're well. We're at Gatwick, yeah, as uh, I'm sure you've uh, just discovered. <laughs> yeah, we're at Gatwick, just about to, uh, to depart. Okay, okay, so we're going to be taking off on 26 left. So we are going to taxi via, let's see, uh, November, Juliet, Mike, and then stay on Mike, I think is probably the best way. Sure. Callum, thank you very much for the follow. I hope you're well. Welcome to the stream. All right, so we've got our pushback tug is now here so uh, ground to flight um flight deck to ground good afternoon captain all doors closed and checks completed please release brakes brakes released so let the ride begin okay we are now pushing back uh, we're going to set our initial climb to 230 obviously we've got no uh, restrictions here with atc And we are going to turn facing west. You are cleared to start the engines now. Okay, so let's get the engine started. So engine two first. Josh, thank you very much for the follow on uh, on Facebook. I hope you're well. Welcome to the stream. Okie dokie. So got engine two starting up now. As you can see, we've got the N2 rotations beginning. And just while we're pushing back, I'm going to set the transponder to auto. And then we can set also the TCAS to above. Don't need the torch on. Turn facing west. Okay. Okay, I was a bit late to tell him that, but <laughs> we're going to go a little bit behind this taxiway here, but that's uh, not the end of the world, I don't think. All right, so we should be taxiing via November, which is this taxiway here. So we've got engine one, uh, sorry, engine two stabilized now. Uh, engine one starts. All right, so let's just have a quick look here. So it should be November. Oh God, where is, so yeah, so this is November here. Papa. Yeah, so November is coming down this way. And then we are gonna take a left. In fact, I'll just join us back over here. Stop pushback. Okay tell when the parking brakes are set okay that was uh, quite a poor pushback but hey oh it's microsoft flight simulator brake set okay pins removed oh i'm that's done new. <laughs> wish you a nice flight wait what okay 
I'm not sure what happened there, but... Okay. This, uh, this airport scenery is uh, really coming along nicely. It looks so good. All right, so both our engines are now stable. Let's uh, just wait for the pushback guy to get out of the way. We can turn off the APU now. The nose light can come to taxi, and the runway turn-off lights can also come on. Uh, while we're up here, I might as well turn the strobes to auto and the landing lights to armed. And that is everything good to go, I believe. We can set our flaps to one. Okay, so let's get moving. So brakes released and just add the tiniest amount of thrall and let's uh, let's bring our work, bring ourselves on to uh, November here. So we're going to go November, then Juliet, which should be the first left, and then Mike, which should be the first right. So this is uh, November, as we can see from this sign here. The N with the black background means that's the taxiway we are on. And then we're looking for Juliet. I'm not sure if I said it was on the first left or the first right, but it's the first left, I think it should be. So these taxiway signs are amazing. They're so clear compared to some of the airports. So there we go. We've got Juliet to the left here. Uh, Callum, yes, indeed. I do You normally fly on iVow. In fact, I am on iVow now. It's just there's no controller here, unfortunately. In fact, you've just reminded me I need to speak on Unicom and just let them know that I'm on my way. Okay. So I just sent a message out on Unicom to let them know. And we are now on Julia. That, I believe, is, is the plane we could hear. That is another... I mean, it looks like it should be another player, but it's not got any lights on, which is interesting. All right, so we've got Juliet here and then Mike to the right, which is where we want to go. Perfect. Oh, I love the taxiway signs in this airport. They're so clear. It sounds like a stupid thing to get excited about, but honestly, some of the taxiway signs in some airports, they're just terrible in this game. All right, so we are turning on to Mike now, and we're just going to follow Mike all the way down to the runway. Let's check the cabin. So recently what I did is, I don't know if you can see me doing it right now, actually, is I bound my brake to this little slider here gotta be the best thing i've done so far it's amazing all right so we're still on mic this is 26 left as you can just see on this sign ah you're a controller on ivow uk normally stansted or manchester i actually flew from manchester um maybe this time last sunday i think it was um and i spoke to someone there um don't know it might be in you <laughs> But that's really cool, man. Really cool. Uh, big respect for the controllers. All right. So we are on the runway. Let's just break on down here to a standstill. Probably should have just held short, really. But um, there's nobody else here. So let's just uh, take it a bit easier. Turn our strobes on. And we'll just announce on uh, Unicom that we are about to take off. Okie dokie. So we should be good to go. All we need to do is just basically take a left once we get out of the airport. We'll turn this to 
normal. I always forget I've I'm still in a habit of doing all this stuff with the mouse, but I've actually got it all here on this controller. <laughs> right. Everything else is set. We are ready to rock. Let's go. The parking brake is released. I'm just going to hold down the brake as we come up to about 50% N1. Uh, it's stabilized. Release the brake and up to flex. Mark, thank you very much for the follow. I hope you're well, and I hope you're having a great Sunday. Welcome to the stream at 80 knots. V1 and rotate. Woo! Look at that. That's a positive rate. Right? Gear up. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I might just do a right turn here, actually, instead of a left turn, because the, the weather looks incredible. <laughs> Alright, let's do a right turn. Leave a climb. Down to climb thrust. And let's slow in the nose so we can accelerate a bit. Get a nice uh, 30 degree bank going. There we go, S speed flaps up. Oh, baby. All right, let's start pitching back up. And I'm just gonna fly this manually until we get back on to our track. You always have to do like super big ass turns when, uh, when you're not using a departure. Yeah, Callum, I have noticed there is, um, there does seem to be, uh, I'm not sure why this is flashing. We have 23,000 sets. Let's just click this again. There we go. All right, but uh, yeah, like I was saying, so um, yeah, I have noticed there isn't that much uh, going on in the UK on IVA, unfortunately, which is quite sad because I like to start a lot of my uh, flights there because there's some really good sceneries coming out. bit of a shame i actually so transition altitude that's uh oops let's not do that let's change it to standard uh but yeah man um i have noticed that it's uh it is a bit unfortunate uh like today for example i i actually um i actually planned this flight because i saw there was a controller on at gatwick um, but with Ivao, I seem to have, like, incredibly bad luck. And pretty much every flight I set up, I see, oh, amazing, there's a controller on. Let's just turn the autopilot on. I'm not sure why it does that little lurch every time. It's it's so strange. Um, disarm the speed brakes. And uh, we're looking good, really. All right, cool. So, yeah, like I was saying, Callum... Um, I seem to have really bad luck with Ivar recently because every time I... Usually what I do is I'll look on the map and I'll see, okay, where can I fly to and from which has a controller? Um, and I seem to always have really bad luck whereby I see there's an airport with a controller on and I will plan a flight around it and then as soon as I log in, because obviously it takes me some time to do the flight plan and file it and whatnot, I'll log in and the controller's logged off. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think I've been a bit unlucky recently, but again, like you say, the UK is a little bit, a little bit hit and miss. Stunning low clouds here in Gatwick. This is uh, live weather currently, but uh, not live time, obviously. 
So we could turn off all our landing and nose lights because uh, we're passing through 10,000 feet now. And, uh, and we're up in the air. It's looking good. It's looking good. Let's switch out here to this camera view. I absolutely love this one. So, um, how often do you get on iVow then, Callum? I'll have to try and, uh, <laughs> I have to try and get on one time when you're online and, and we can do some, uh, well, I could, I could do some flying, you could do some controlling, that'd be quite cool, I think. Oh, and Lewis as well, thank you very much for the follow. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a great weekend. Welcome to the stream. Sorry I missed that before. Oh, I can just just see down into London City from here actually you can see the O2 arena down there and some of Canary Wharf another aircraft actually flying just down here as well presumably flying into Heathrow maybe Let's see, can we see Heathrow from here? Oh, it won't be Heathrow actually, will it? Because Heathrow is on the other side of London. It will be potentially Stansted maybe? I don't know. I don't really know Stansted too well. Normally a few times a uh, week, mainly at the weekends. Okay, dude. Well, uh, by all means, uh, I'll, I'll look out for you, dude. You, have you got your... Uh, is your name on Ivar the same as... Uh, is, it, is it Callum on, on Ivar or do you have your name hidden? All right, so we're actually getting quite close to our cruising altitude here. Two, three, zero. Um, that's our initial cruising altitude. However, we're going to start another climb once we get a little bit further into the trip. Uh, once we get to Waypoint Conan. Uh, we're going to... Uh, yeah, we're going to basically uh, activate another climb. Let's see how far we are, actually. Yeah, so we have, uh, we're at our top of climb now, so yeah, alt star. Conan is uh, in about, uh, about 50 miles, so yeah, looking good. And we're going to have a tailwind for this trip, so it should be pretty, pretty rapid really, I think. There's normally about a two hour flight. Uh, I think we're going to do it in about. Well, estimated time of arrival currently is in about half an hour, according to this, but I think that's wrong. It'll probably be about an hour, maybe. Uh, I do have a Discord. Yeah, Callum, it's ex ex just type in exclamation point uh, Discord. Yo, uh, Preston, dude, welcome back to the stream. I hope you're well. 
thank you very much for sending 45 stars. I'm doing very well, thank you. Yeah, doing very well. Thank you very much for asking. And uh, once again, thank you very much for the stars. I hope you're, uh, you're keeping well. And uh, yeah, hope you've had a great weekend, mate. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you. And uh, uh, Saul, uh, I think I'm saying that correctly, or is it just Saul? Welcome to the chat. Unfortunately, only English in the chat. I can't actually read that, unfortunately. Do apologize. I only speak English. So once we get to Conan, we are going to step up our altitude to 370. Do, 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 do. I'm just going to set up that message on iVow. Dude, I vow sometimes so strange. Uh, Joe and Adam, thank you both for the follows. I hope you're both well and having a great uh, weekend. Welcome to the stream. Adam, uh, fly to Canada. Yes, I would love to, mate. I would love to. Uh, got a couple of flights planned in for today, but uh, what I usually say is if you want to request a, a flight, uh, if you check out my Discord, uh, the link is in the uh, description of the post. You check out my Discord and then go in there and you can uh, go into the Microsoft Flight Simulator text channel and uh, put any flights that you want to uh, to recommend there. Uh, reason being is because I do a lot of planning and preparation for my flights, so I need to like plan it in advance. And Sol, lots of love, mate. Lots of love to you too. And uh, welcome. Hello to, uh, to yourself from India. Preston, today we're heading to Innsbruck in Austria. Could be pretty cool. It's uh, very, very snowy over there at the moment, so it's going to be an absolutely stunning approach. I can't wait for this. Okay, so let's have a look outside. So we can see out the window there. That is, what is that? <laughs> I thought I knew it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's Calais down there. So you've got Calais over here, probably down this way. In fact, it's probably just, let's see, I'm looking at a map. Calais is, in fact, round about here. So Calais... And then you've got a little bit further on, you've got Dunkirk uh, on the French uh, the French coast, obviously. And we're going to be coming on down into... Uh, where is this next? Uh, into uh, Brussels. And then across uh, into Germany and then down into Austria. So we should get some ATC once we get over Germany, I believe. So we'll be checking in with some, uh, some traffic controllers. Lock, hello. You're from Nepal, uh, Nepal, dude. That's amazing. That's amazing. I would love to go to Nepal. And uh, yeah, man, Mount Everest. Absolutely amazing. That's incredible, dude. Incredible. We've done some really good flights actually over the Himalayas and uh, from um, Kathmandu. Yeah, amazing area to fly over. Need to do some more flying over there, actually. I really want to do uh, some more... Uh, yeah, some more flights through the Himalayas, I think, for sure. In fact, one of our viewers did uh, suggest a route that I've got down pegged for next stream. 
uh, where we're going to be flying from uh, Kathmandu. All right, so obviously, obviously my look being what it is, uh, some of the controllers have logged off over Central Europe, uh, but there is still some on over Germany, uh, sort of East Germany. So we should get some uh, East Germany uh, as we pass down through uh, Munich and then down into Innsbruck. We do have some center controllers there, so we'll be able to speak to those on the approach, which is uh, good stuff. And just to give you guys an idea, uh, yeah, going across to the east here, this is our flight. Oh, we've actually got uh, another aircraft uh, right behind us. Let's see where he is. Uh, he's at 220, so if we actually look behind us, we should be able to see a plane uh, not terribly far away. Alright, so we're approaching Conan as well now, so we'll... We'll start our climb in a second. Uh, I can't see that other aircraft. Maybe it's not rendered in, maybe it's too far. Alright, so we're at Conan, so we're going to start our climb up to 370 now. Oh, got a lot of cloud cover over Brussels. And wow, I just missed a whole load of uh, notifications. Holy crap. Uh, thank you very much for all the followers, everybody. So we've got uh, we've got Omar, uh, uh, Jaguar, uh, Jesper, and Bo. Thank you all for the follows. I hope you're all well. Having a great weekend. Welcome to the stream. Also, Matt, thank you very much for the follow. Hope you're well and having a, a great weekend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad to see you all. Don't be afraid to uh, say hello in the chat. All right, so we're taking, uh, we're commencing our climb up to 370 now. Let's see what other views we've got here. Right. As you can see on the map here, um, there is actually a pinned comment in the Facebook chat where you can bring up this map yourself and follow us along if you so desire. Um, yeah, so we're going to be heading over this way essentially. Heading over this way and then kind of down and down like this and then into Innsbruck like that so we should get some a, a decent amount of ATC over this way so yeah that should be cool wow holy crap look at all these <laughs> all these uh, aircrafts going from uh, Turkey by the looks of things yeah going from I Istanbul and uh, I'm not sure what this one is uh Goxen. I probably pronounced that very wrong. Uh, I think there's an event on today between uh, Turkey and Bulgaria and uh, what country is this? Oh, it's Hungary, isn't it? So, yeah, Hungary, Turkey, Hungary, Turkey, and I think uh, Czech, Czechia as well. Yeah, right here. Nice. Very cool. <laughs> Look at that big queue of planes. Oh, my God. And then later on, we are going to head out to uh, Hong Kong, which uh, is here. Obviously, we don't have anyone on down here. Probably the middle of the night in uh, China at the moment. And we're going to be flying from this airport here to the old Kai Tak airport, which I think is somewhere around here in this area uh, a very short flight but I just want to try the approach into Kai Tak because it's a pretty wild one 
should be very cool. Alright, so passing through 30,000 feet now. Yeah, I've got a slight, uh, I mean, it's more or less a crosswind with a slight tailwind component, 43 knots. Once we start making this turn down to the south, we should uh, obviously catch that as a little bit of a tailwind. The sounds in the cabin on this uh, on this aircraft are absolutely, they're so, I feel like they're so true to life. Like if you're sat on a plane right now, if you guys are watching and uh, you've got some headphones to hand, if you stick your headphones on right now and compare this to how it actually sounds like on an aircraft, it's, it's so realistic. It's in absolutely incredible. Oh, what have I done? Wait, what's happened to my controllers? Kenny, hello, mate. How are you doing? Welcome back. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're well. Hope you're having a, a good weekend. All right, I just need to check this control real quick. Uh, 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 fix cap. Oh, it's unbound itself. Interesting. Interesting. All right, I'll just set this uh, camera, fixed camera, previous. There we go, that's what we wanted. All right, see. Yo, Cross, much love to you as well, brother. I hope you're well. Uh, NC, whereabouts is that? Is that in the US? Uh, Kenny, uh, not up to much, uh, doing all good. Well, glad to hear it, mate. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, yeah, I'm keeping very well, thank you. Looks like we've got a bit of turbulence here, actually. Oh, I don't know what happened there. It stopped us from climbing. Yeah, that's interesting. What kind of graphics card do you need for that level of graphics? Um, well, I have a NVIDIA 2070 Super. Um, you could probably get away with something less I know there are some people with 1660s that play this, um, AMD 5700 XT as well, or 5600 XT would probably be good. Um, but I mean, it just depends really on what, what, what your budget is really. Um, you know, you can get graphics that look this good with probably most recent cards. Um, but it's just going to be a frame rate that varies, so, yeah. Um, but I would personally recommend, like, a, I would recommend, like, one of the newer NVIDIA cards if you're going to get anything. I would probably wait a little bit until they come back into stock, and I would probably get a, a 3070 at least if you're going to be playing in 1080p. Um, but I, it's probably worth waiting for them to come back in stock because they're so much better value than the old cards. Uh, Cross, North Carolina. Ah, I see, yep. Thought it might be the US. Well, uh, much love to you over in North Carolina. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you're well. I hope you enjoy uh, the flight over to, uh, to Innsbruck. Uh, Francex as well. Thank you very much for the follow. I hope you're well. I hope you're having a great weekend. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the flight. 
That's what I should start saying, really, isn't it? <laughs> welcome to... Welcome on board. Welcome to the flight. Uh, do get yourself comfortable. And uh, if you need anything, by all means, uh, ping the little bell above your head. And uh, one of our cabin crew will be uh, pleased to help you out. All right. So, climbing up to 370 here. We are at uh, Mac point seven eight four, and yeah, doing good. Uh, missed some notifications there, I think. No, I didn't. <laughs> Mike, thank you very much for the follow. I hope you're well. Welcome on board, and uh, hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Welcome, welcome. All right, let's. Uh, I always forget to set the uh, Q and H on this one. There we go. Uh, oh, wow. Two, two follows at once there. Cross, thank you very much for the follow. And Domingo as well. Thank you both for the follows. I hope you're well. I hope you're having a great week. Welcome on board. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. And uh, glad to have you. Time in Nepal is 1.45. That is very, very early in the morning, dude. Very, very early. What, uh, what, how come uh, you're up so late? Are you just having a late night? Have you been working all night? What's going on, dude? Are you checking out the stars? I bet you get some pretty nice uh, views of the stars over there. Looking very nice. The very cool, cool cloud coverage going on at the moment. You've got these high level clouds and a blanket of sort of mid level. Looking great, man. Mariner, welcome back. Good to see you, mate. I'm doing very well, thank you. Doing very well. How are you doing? Welcome back. Let's have a quick look on Ivao and just see uh, how far we are away from getting some ATC coverage here. Oh my god. Getting wild over here. Alright, so we are here. Uh, so yeah, we've got a little bit of a way to go yet, but... Hey, hey. Well, I do a flight from uh, to or from Aldergrove, Northern Ireland, for you sometime. Yeah, mate. Of course, of course. Always down to do uh, requested flights. But uh, I just need to try and remember beforehand. Uh, if you've got uh, Kenny, do you have Discord by any chance? If you do. Uh, go over to my Discord and drop it on there so I remember next time I'm planning my flights. Good. I'm glad you're doing well, Mariner. Well, welcome back. Flying over to Innsbruck today. I don't know if you've had a mess around with the track FPA mode in the A320 yet, which uh, they recently added. Uh, we're going to be checking out going into uh, Innsbruck doing the VOR approach from the east. Uh, the Discord is in the... Uh, if you go to the post... Uh, for this uh, live stream and you click show more uh, it should be on that list there there's a big list of links and uh, the discord link is on there yeah I have no clue how to use it well uh, 
Yeah, we're going to give it a go today. It's the first time I've actually properly used it. I've had a bit of a tinker about with it, but uh, nothing too serious. <laughs> so, yeah, look forward to uh, giving it a try, actually. I know at Innsbruck, unfortunately, there are some issues with the actual location of the localizer beams. Uh, but I think we should be fine. It shouldn't be too much of an issue. Last time you landed Innsbruck and I went off the end of the runway, I need to get clued up on our nav approaches. Yeah, dude, if you check uh, 320 Sim Pilots channel on YouTube, he's got some tutorials on our nav approaches. Um, I'm not sure about Microsoft Flight Simulator, but the process is the same if you check his X-Plane videos. Uh, is it like VNAV? Um, not really, no, because VNAV is... is uh, the aircraft calculates out the vertical profile for you. It's it's kind of like using... If I jump on back to the cockpit here, it's kind of like using the vertical speed mode. Uh, so, yeah, you basically press this button and then it switches to FPA here. Let's see if you can zoom in there. There we go. So, uh, yeah, it switches from vertical speed to FPA standing for flight path angle and uh yeah basically you just set in the angle that you want so at uh, innsbruck we're going to be using a 3.8 degree angle and you set that in there uh so pretty handy for non-precision approaches like vor approaches or um localizer approaches uh what else could there be um well any any variation of of those really or even just an LNAV approach where there's no vertical guidance. Uh, managed altitude is VNAV. Yes, basically, yeah, it's, it's like VNAV in an Airbus. Like managed altitude is, uh, is like VNAV, yeah. I didn't mean to press that there. Let's see. So, uh, Fett and Julio. Uh, I'm not sure if I saw Scott as well. Scott, thank you very much. And uh, you other guys, thank you very much for the follows. Welcome on board. Welcome to the flight. I hope you're well. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, so Mariner, you would set... Uh, you basically set a descent angle uh, once you uh, get on to. So we're basically going to be doing a let's let's uh, let's jump on to over here, um, and I'll show you guys the charts. So um, at Innsbruck, we are going to be arriving uh, via Tulsa, uh, Tulsi. Yeah, we're going to fly into this VOR called Rattenberg. Um, hopefully they don't ask us to hold because that is a pain in this sim. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to head down to Rattenberg. That's going to be... That's the star, essentially. Very, very simple. Uh, and then... Uh, we are going to try for the Lock DME East approach. So that is this approach. Um, as you can see up here, lock DME East, which means, uh, well, I'm sure you're aware, but just to be clear, localizer DME distance measuring equipment from the east. So we're going to be basically grabbing the localizer using the localizer button in the cockpit. And then we will use the uh, descent angle, which is here. As you can see, it's 3.77, but we'll, we'll just dial in 3.8 and that should be fine. Because you can't put in 3.77. So, um, yeah, basically there's no vertical guidance on this approach. So you basically have to just dial it in yourself. You could use vertical speed as well. Uh, so you could, you know, obviously uh, on approach, you're probably going to be going at about, what, 140 knots. So you could dial in, you could dial in 900 f uh, feet per minute. Um, you could do that instead, and that would probably work. I have actually done it that way before, but uh, the advantage of using uh, the descent angle here is that it's not sort of um, it's not a, a 
a specific vertical speed so it can vary in your vertical speed based on you know your speed so you know if you're not going exactly 140 uh ground speed then uh or if if, if, if it's windy etc it will uh, basically change your vertical speed uh to hold that angle rather than just keeping a vertical speed uh which could change the angle if that makes sense so uh that's essentially what it's going to be should be pretty cool and then what i'm hoping for as well is if it's not too busy uh, and it's not too windy either if if we can i, I think the wind that's forecast is going to be from the west uh let's have a look actually so the wind is yeah so it's coming from the west actually no is it uh, I've totally forgotten how to read these little barbs now. Uh, no, it'd be coming from the east, actually, wouldn't it? But it's only like five knots, so it's very, very light winds that's forecast. Um, so, what I'm hoping to do, depending on how busy it is in the ATC, um, what I'm hoping to do is do the circle to land visual approach. So, we basically descend down that localizer, and then when, when we get to 4.2 miles... Uh, from the localizer, uh, we actually break off and do a visual circuit around and land in on the other side of the runway, which should be pretty cool, really. It's 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 a lot of fun. I actually tried that before, uh, so hopefully we'll uh, we'll be able to do that if it's not too busy. So that's uh, that's the approach briefing, I suppose. Hope that made sense. Uh, if you have any questions, obviously, feel free to uh, to let me know in the chat. Hopefully, uh, I explained that okay, though. But yeah, if you watch, um, like I say, uh, what's he called? 320 Sim Pilot. He has got a very good tutorial on it. And he probably explains it a lot better than I do, so... <laughs> Joe, thank you very much for the follow, dude. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a great weekend. Welcome on board. All right. Let's see here. Let's have a quick look on Ivow now. So, yeah. We're going to be heading east for a little bit. We might not get uh, we might not get ATC till quite late on here, actually, unfortunately, because I feel like we're going to turn right down this way. Once we get to Frankfurt, which is here, we're actually going to make a turn down this way. So we're going to miss off this center controller. We'll go into this area and, and come in this way. So we'll get uh, some ATC, but not until a little bit later on. Where am I from? Uh, I am from the UK, from Yorkshire in uh, in the north of England. Right then, so kind of just taking it easy for a little bit here. Let's, uh, let's have a look at our ETAs and whatnot here. So our ETA here is uh, 20 past 4 UTC time, which is uh, obviously in-game UTC. So that's in about uh, 40 minutes time.
So I'll tell you what we'll do is, I'm not sure if I actually did this before. So we'll go on to uh, MCDU and we'll just set in, uh, we'll just set in uh, localizer 26, which is what we want uh, via RTT Romeo Tango, Tango, uh, which is the Rattenberg uh, VOR. Whilst we're here as well, what we can do is we can set in the localizer frequency and make sure that's correct. 111.1 is correct indeed. Uh, we'll set in the course as well, which is going to be 255. Hello? I thought you could set that now. No, it doesn't seem to work. Maybe I need to be closer. Uh, and then we'll set in uh, some VORs. So we shall put in... We shall set the Innsbruck VOR, which is I India, November, November. We'll put that in here. That is not in the database, apparently. Uh, oh, sorry, that's because it's uh, an ADF, isn't it? So we'll put that in there, that's fine. And then we shall also put in... We'll put in the Rattenberg VOR as well. Not in database, apparently. Uh, oh! That's because that is not a VOR. I've been calling it a VOR this whole time. It's not a VOR. It is a um, NDB. My bad. Uh, RTT. So we'll put that in there as well. Kill. Cool. Uh, let's see. So uh, thank you very much for the followers. So we've got uh, uh, Kiga, uh, Leo, and Raphael, and... Uh, Hatet. I'm not sure if that's the right way to say that. Apologies if it's not, but uh, thank you very much for the follows, all you guys. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're all very well and having a great weekend. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Cross, you fought beside the Brits in Iraq. Amazing, man. Great, guys. Thank you for the entertainment during this crazy time. Keep up the good work, man. Uh, sit back and enjoy the flight. Dude, yeah, man. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, uh, feel free to let me know in the chat. But yeah, man, uh, appreciate the kind words. Appreciate the kind words. Good, good to hear that uh, you know our British troops are you know um, a good uh, representation, I suppose, of uh, of some British people. So yeah, that's great to hear. Uh, I do have uh, one friend in the military and one in the RAF, and uh, yeah, they're both uh, pretty sound lads. Uh, never done any VOR stuff either. No, um, I've not really done any VOR specific flying, like VOR to VOR, uh, sort of manually and things like that. Um, but uh, I do sometimes use them for distance uh, to get sort of distance measurements and... Um, excuse me. And um, obviously as part of a flight plan, you know, use them as waypoints and whatnot. Um, although having said that, when I did the uh, approach in to Madeira uh, the other week, can't remember when it was now. Uh, we did use a VOR then to uh, we tracked an outbound course and uh, used that to set ourselves up for a visual approach. How do you use them for distance? So uh, basically just like how I set up in the MCDU. So you go onto the RadNav page and um, I mean, you can use the NDBs or any other ADF. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the word is, but uh, any other ADF uh, in this, these two here, or you can put your VORs in the top and then basically they will show up here. So if you use these, um, these switches, you can put either VOR or ADF and then one and two corresponds to the ones in the um, MCDU. And then if I come down here, um, when you get closer within range, they will tell you, it'll tell you the distance there at the bottom. 
and then also if you go into rose view i'm not sure if this is fully implemented yet but see these arrows as well it will show the it will show you these arrows on here as well that correspond to the direction um that the uh the um radio beacon is uh with a vr as well you can obviously set the course so the course will also show up there as well so with this blue line so you can get yourself lined up with it Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it helps in situational awareness, I suppose, uh, for when you have it as distance. Like, for example, I'm going to use it today uh, when we do the... Uh, hang on one second. So when we do the visual circle to land. Um, so I will use the first NDB, which is this uh, Rattenberg here. Uh, we need to be at... Uh, we need to be at 9,500 feet when we get to here, and that's that's uh, there's no leeway on that. We have to be at 9,500 there uh, in order to get set up in time for this approach. Um, so I'm going to use that as a marker to monitor my monitor my descent and plan my descent, um, and then also I'm going to use the other one that I tuned in, the Innsbruck ADF uh, NDB. Because uh, when I'm doing the visual circuit, once I know this, um, once I know this ADF gets to my the very left of the plane, then I'm about to start. Basically, I'll just start the right turn after passing. After that passes my right wing, and then I can use that to initiate that turn, and then uh, then I can use this distant marker to do the last turn. But yeah, that's how I'll use that one. Well, I hope that's uh, helpful anyway, uh, Mariner. I know I'm probably not the best at explaining stuff like that, but hopefully it gives you some ideas. Oof. Look at the sunset. I was hoping to make it to Innsbruck before it, the sun went down, actually. We might need to wind back time a little bit. <laughs> I think I missed some follows there. So, Billy, thank you very much as well. Thank you for the follow. Welcome on board. I hope you're well and having a fantastic weekend. Let's see. Can we get a uh, nice little... There we are, look at that, the sunlight coming through the uh, windows there. Uh. Lovely. See, can we get it to coming through the cockpit windows? That'd be cool. Not quite. Nice.
Billy, it's an absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you very much for stopping by. Look at that orange though. That's some serious, serious color right there. What kind of software is this, Christian? Um, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator. All right, um, let's jump back down to our flight plan and let's see. So we've got 241 miles to go. Not too much to worry about at the moment in terms of uh, descending. Uh, let's see, are we gonna bump into any controllers? Uh, that's not what I wanted to go on. Uh, uh, we are just passing over Frankfurt, actually. That would be what was below us. Um, so not for a little while yet, but we will be... Um, yeah, this guy has been on for three hours, so I don't know if he's going to stay on too much longer. Let's see what happens anyway. George, thank you very much for the follow. I hope you're well. I hope you're having a great, uh, great weekend. Welcome to the stream. And thank you, everybody else on Facebook, you guys, for the likes as well. Appreciate all the likes. Anything you guys do, whether you're sharing the stream or liking it, is all a massive help to uh, getting the stream out there. So I appreciate that. And uh, if you're not following and you're enjoying the stream and you're enjoying the, the flight, uh, don't forget to hit the follow button or if it's easier for you, you can type in exclamation point notify into the comments and uh, that will uh, have you follow the, uh, the page. George, absolute pleasure, dude. Yeah, it's an amazing looking game, this. Absolutely stunning. All right, then. So, yeah, it looks like the sun is going to go down on us here. Let's see, where is the sun? It's just there. I mean, I don't know. Um, I kind of wanted to land while the sun was still up. Well, mainly because we wanted to do the visual circuit. <laughs> I suppose we don't really need full visual to do it, but yeah, I might just uh, I might just have to wind back the time a little bit once we get 
bit closer to Innsbruck, just uh, just so we've got a bit, a bit more visibility because it's absolutely stunning at the moment. It's all snowy in Innsbruck, so kind of want to see that on the approach. You used to play Flight Sim 2 on the Atari 8-bit. Dude, that's incredible. Yeah, I bet it's come a long way since then. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely incredible. The, uh, the fidelity in this sim is just absolutely unreal. Like, even if you look at, like, even if you look at, like, the windscreen and stuff here, like, look at all, like, the detail, like, the scratches and stuff on the windows. That's just... Just a crazy attention to detail. What is this on? Blue pump override. Why is that on? Interesting. I didn't realize that button actually worked in this. I'm not sure I want to press it though in flight. <laughs> I didn't realize that button actually was... Uh, they must have implemented that. What's this one? Oh. Looks like they work as well. Toilet in op. Reading light. Oh. Oh, that actually works. Let's see. Where does that actually put its light? That's not very helpful, is it? It goes on the headrest. I uh, must be running some setup graphics are immense is it very hard to fly do you have to learn every control um i mean just to put it in perspective for you uh, i suppose it depends how much you like learning about this stuff um but to put it in perspective for you i only started using this flight simulator and i haven't used the flight simulator myself since like flight sim 98 for example um so um yeah, I've only been using this flight sim since it came out in August. And I feel pretty confident, at least in this aircraft. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I suppose you don't need to know every control, but it depends, like, what kind of flight you want to do, really. Um, I feel like the... Um, in a simulator, it's very predictable. Like, it's not like anything's going to unexpectedly fail on you unless you set it to do that so um it can be quite predictable so i suppose in terms of the sense that um that is uh, a constant in the sim you don't necessarily have to know every control because you know a lot of the controls are to do with uh managing the aircraft when something fails for example so um at least in an airliner anyway um so yeah but i mean it definitely helps but once you once you start learning it becomes quite apparent that a lot of the buttons and and whatnot they're all very similar across different aircraft so once you learn it one or two then it, it becomes quite easy to translate all across All right, so just before I continue waffling on here, I just need to do a little bit of uh, descent planning here. Um, because we are getting relatively close to our top of descent. So let me just uh, work this out. So I want to be at 9,500. Uh, how do you follow? You, If you type in the chat, uh, in the comments, uh, if you type in exclamation point, exclamation point, and then type in the word notify, uh, then it will, uh, you'll uh, basically follow, follow the page. I'll, I'll type it in the comments as well now so you can see. So if you type it in the chat like, uh, like I've just done. All 
All right, so not too far to go. So let me just uh, work this out real quick. Um, we want to be at 9,500 feet by Rattenberg, which is just by way of estimates. Rattenberg, I believe, is right on this corner here. So that is approximately 140 miles away, potentially. So... Uh, to work out our descent profile, we're going to take 10,000 off 370. So that's 270. Uh, so we'll do 27 times 3, which is 67, 74, 81. So we're going to need about, let's say, let's say about 90 miles to descend into uh, Rattenberg. Let me just uh, confirm my calculations. Yeah, so about 91 miles. Probably be more like 90. I don't think we need to be fully configured, but... Yeah. So I think um, potentially this uh, this uh, radio beacon will come alive before 90 miles. So we might be able to see that. But if not, we'll just have to make an estimate on this. Alfredo, thank you very much for the follow. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Look at this light coming in here. This is pretty nice, really. I'm surprised we haven't had any ATC messages yet because uh, we should, probably should be coming into an ATC controlled area. Yeah, we will be. We'll be coming into uh, Munchen Radar, which is going to be on 128.625. So I'm going to just dial that now. Why did I go this way? I should have gone the other way. <laughs> Six two five, I said, didn't I? Alright, I'm just gonna dial that in so it's ready. Uh, we'll probably get a message off the controller fairly shortly. Uh, Billy, unfortunately, we don't have any command. Well. There are some commands on Facebook, but nothing really too exciting. Yeah, so unfortunately, the <laughs> just my look, like I was saying earlier on, uh, a lot of the controllers have logged off now. So we won't have an approach controller into Innsbruck, unfortunately. Um, but hey ho, never mind. We will contact Munchen Radar very shortly, though. i tell you what I'm going to do is, and I'm sorry if this is going to trigger anybody, <laughs> but I'm going to just wind the time back a little bit, just so we can kind of see the approach into the Alps, because... 
honestly it just it looks absolutely stunning at the moment and it would be an absolute shame not to be able to see it all right so uh let's start our descent well we won't start it yet we'll start it about 80 miles because we we can slow down once we get to rattenberg all right so let's enter our destination data um Oh, I'm using the wrong button. So we'll go to our approach phase and we shall just get the meta at Innsbruck. So it's going to be light winds, 250 at three knots. Transition altitude, I think is 11,000. I might be wrong about that, but I think that's about right. Um, and usually it's given to you by ATC, I believe, but obviously we've got no ATC. Q&H is 1021 and the temperature is currently minus 8 degrees. Our minimums are going to be 3,700 feet. And our thrust reduction Acceleration altitude for our go around uh, is. Hang on, let me just uh, let me just check where we are. Okay, we've got a little bit of time. Uh, do, 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 do. So airport elevation is one nine oh seven. So we're going to set this to uh, three four oh seven. Just in case we need to go around. Hopefully we won't have to. Well, here we go, guys. We are going to start our descent. Anytime now. And because it's nice and quiet now at Innsbruck, uh, we will be able to do the visual approach, I imagine. And we've got light winds, so we don't need to worry about the winds either. Now, the center controller hasn't actually contacted us at all. I'm going to contact him anyway, just for a bit of fun. Just because, why not? Nigel, welcome. I hope you're well. Welcome to the stream. Welcome aboard, even. That's what I'm trying to say now, anyway. I keep forgetting. <laughs> Hang on, let me just check he actually serves this altitude. Uh, only below flight level 315. Okay, so we don't need to speak to him at all, do we? That's why he's not contacted us. All right, so we're going to be making a turn towards the south now. And as you can see down in the distance, you've got the Alps. Looking very, very cool indeed. You can just see some lights of a runway in the distance down there. All right, so you tuned in. Oh, actually, God damn it. What am I doing? I need to start my descent, don't I? I completely forgot about that then for a minute. Uh, okay, so we're going to set this to 9,500 feet. And we'll start an open descent. All right. Should be good, though. I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue to catch the, um, the profile. Uh, okay, so starting our descent, I'm actually going to go ahead and... Just speed us up a little bit to begin with so we can try and recapture this profile that's probably a bit too much So 
So these ADFs are wanting to come alive now. They're flashing on and off, but it's not really working properly. Hopefully it should uh, start giving us some distance information pretty soon. Rami, hello. Hello to Rami in, uh, in Jordan. Welcome to the stream. I hope you are well and having a fantastic Sunday. Okay, so... What have we got? We've got about 60 miles to... In fact, we can just zoom in our map and it'll be a bit, bit more accurate. Yeah, a bit, about 60 miles to... Um, Rattenberg. And we need to lose about 11,000 feet. So that's going to be 33, 43. Okay, so we're actually well ahead of profile now. No, sorry, my calculations are just totally wrong. We need to lose 20,000, 21,000 feet. So uh, 61 miles we need. So yeah, we're right on profile here. Right on profile. As long as we're doing three degrees, uh, which we are just about. So, the runway we're going for is... Why can I not see the runway on this chart? Uh, so we're going for runway 08. Just sending a message out on iVal. Okay. So these um, these ADFs don't want to come. They're not giving me any distance information, which is a bit weird. They keep flashing on and off like that. <laughs> That's no good. Uh, maybe if I go in back here and just clear them out real quick. And we'll tune them back in. So we'll tune in 303 for Rattenberg. No, oh, still not working. And now we'll tune in 420. Maybe it was still a bit too far away. I don't know. That's a bit weird. I've never seen that before. Anyway, we'll leave it at that for now. Spencer, how are you doing? Welcome on board. I hope you are well. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, doing very well, thank you. Very well indeed. How are you doing? All right. So let's see how we're doing. So we've got about 40 miles to go until Rattenberg. In fact, Rattenberg is probably about 38 miles. So we need to lose about 23,000. So that's, what, 69 miles we need. Wait, we need to use um, 19,000. So we need... Wait, I'm getting so confused here. Let's just do it. Yes, let's, let's just use a calculator and, and get it done with. <laughs> so 14 times 3 is... I'm trying to challenge myself, you see, on my quick mass. Uh, 42 miles. So we're a little bit above profile. So I am going to just uh, increase our speed just a little bit here. Uh, 
Giovanni, any problem with the instruments? Um, not really, no. I think um, there is a little bit of a bug with the ADF frequencies that I've tuned in. Uh, but other than that, no, we're, we're, looking, we're looking okay. Uh, I'm going to set the auto brake as well. While we're here, we'll set this to low. And everything else is uh, is good to go. Look at the uh, whoo! Look at the Alps on the approach here. Looking absolutely insane. Yeah, I absolutely love this approach. It's uh, pretty damn stunning. We're actually going to be heading over into the hills over here, and I believe Innsbruck is. Try to see if I can spot which valley it is. Maybe it's over in this valley over here. Or it could even be this one, but I'm pretty sure it's over here. Uh, you're good. Still off work. Furloughed. Been off since end of November. Yeah, mate, I know how that feels. I am in a fairly similar situation myself. Um... Not necessarily furloughed, but I am self-employed, so I'm getting very, very, very little work at the moment. All right, so let's um, make sure everything is ready to rock here. Um, yeah. Look at that view, though. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Tim, thank you very much for the follow. Hope you are doing well and having a fantastic weekend. Welcome to the stream. All right, so we're approaching Rattenberg via well now. Um, got about 15 miles to go. So, yeah, we should be good. Nice on profile here. Looking good out the window. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look down like this and I'm just going to make it a bit lighter because sun, because we're traveling to the west, the sun is setting a lot quicker than what I anticipated. So let's just, uh, let's just do a bit of this. Nobody saw anything. <laughs> Okay, so 10 miles to go till Rattenberg, and then we're going to start getting configured. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pull out a speed brakes and just get a little bit ahead of profile here because we've got a, quite a bit of speed to lose now. Greg, I hope you're well, mate. I see you there in the chat. Hope all is well with you, brother. All right, so yeah, Innsbruck is down in this valley down here. We're going to take a right turn momentarily. Uh, we'll turn on our landing system as well so that we can uh, get some distance information to our um, localizer. So we are coming in uh, pretty quick here, but should be good. Woo. Let's see, we've got the um, the spoilers up, helping us get uh, a little bit of a higher rate of descent. All right, so we've just got about five miles to Rattenberg. So yeah, we're right on profile here. Uh, I'm actually just gonna put us back on manage speed right now and uh, we'll put the speed brakes out all the way good to see you as well as well uh, Craig yeah doing doing great thank you very much for asking 
All right, so let's set this to uh, Q and H, and let's just double check our figures here. So we want to be 1021. I'm actually just going to press B and just verify that. So 1024 is actually the sim um, Q and H. So we'll leave it at that. Uh, so we are at Rattenberg VOR now. We are a little bit high. Uh, not a huge issue at the moment, but that is going to come into play shortly. Uh, we do need to slow down quite a lot, but we do have level flight for a short while here. All right, so this is where it's going to get a little bit, a little bit difficult for me to read chat because this is going to be quite a, quite a hands-on approach. Um, so yeah, let's just have another quick look out the window before we, uh, <laughs> before we descend on down here. Wow, absolutely stunning. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so we've hit our approach phase. That's why we're slowing down so much. So we should start to descend quite a bit quicker now. Uh, should start to turn as well. And I'm actually going to wait until we get a little bit more on this corner here. And I'm actually going to hit localizer, and that's going to straighten it out a bit. Uh, oh, God. We're a little bit behind profile here, so I'm actually just going to, real quick, just set this. Actually, no, we're fine. Uh, we don't need to start descending for another mile yet, so we are good for the time being. I don't need to panic quite so much. Uh, we do get glide slope indication here, but we're not going to use that. Uh, why? Oh yeah, we're still still leveling off at 9,500. We'll set this to 3,700. And we are going to activate that descent. And we're going to set our flight path angle to... I'm going to set this to 3.9 to begin with. Because uh, we definitely have got a little bit of catching up to do here. All right, cool. Edward, yes, we're going to be doing a manual land landing today. This is a visual approach into uh, to Innsbruck. So we're definitely a bit above profile. I have kind of gone a little bit a little bit wrong here, but we're not doing too badly. We're not uh, gaining too much speed. I'm actually going to put flaps one out. Hopefully that should uh, help cause a little bit more drag and help us descend a little bit quicker and maybe just slow us down a bit. I'm actually going to put the gear down as well to help slow us down even more. We are on profile though, we're not doing too badly. Um, we are at approaching 14 miles. We need to be at 7,500 feet by 14 miles, uh, which just looks like we're actually gonna be able to, uh, to, to manage that. Um, we're still a little bit high actually. Um, so I'm just gonna knock this down to four degrees for uh, one mile here. Uh, so at 13 miles, we should be at 7,100 feet. which uh, we are. So I'm going to put this back to 3.8 and we're going to continue on down the localizer here. Uh, do need to keep my eye on this once we get to 4.2 miles on the localizer. We are going to make a left turn. Woo! Right, we are on profile here so I can relax for a second. Let's have a quick look out outside. <laughs> So here is our airport straight ahead in the distance. Looking pretty magic outside. All right, okay, let's jump back into the cockpit, make sure we're still on profile. So just pass through 10 miles. At 10 miles, we should have been at 5.9, which looks like we're about fine. Nine miles, we should be at 5,500, which we are. 
beautiful. If anything, we're just a slight bit high, so I'm going to just knock this down by a little bit. Uh, at 8 miles, we should be at 5,100 feet. So I'm just monitoring our descent rate here along with this distance. So Okay, so let's put this back to 3.8. 3 just monitoring this distance and this altitude here. So we're right on profile, looking good. Um, yeah, looking great. Uh, this is not relevant to us. This is just an exam that's starting. All right, so... We've just got to keep this rate of descent now. And once we get to 4.2, we want to make a turn out to the left at level flight, 3,700 feet. Um, we want to go to 230 degrees. So I'm actually just going to... Uh, I'm going to just set this now. If I can wind this in, it's going to take ages. Oh my god. All right, so we're leveling out now, and we want to act activate the turn, uh, basically, now. Okay, that's not worked for some reason. I'm just going to use heading. Uh, it won't... Oh, I've not turned the localizer off, that's why. There we go. So, flying the track now. Uh, we're about a mile late turning there, but it's not the end of the world. We've got another aircraft actually uh, coming in for a landing there. <laughs> I didn't see him speaking on... Uh... Uh, speaking on uh, Ivao. All right, so we took the turn a little bit late there, but it's not the end of the world. For some reason, uh, why? Hang on a sec. Let me just think. Um, right, so flaps two. Uh, this is an Airbus uh, A320. Minimum. So we've got our minimums now, and we are continuing. Minimum. Okay, so we are now going to make a turn of 264 degrees. We are going to get flap three. That aircraft's uh, invisible. I <laughs> know, oh, it's just really small. All right, I'm going to turn the volume up for you guys so you guys can hear the, uh, the call outs. Woo! All right, so flap's full. Get our seatbelt signs on. Get our landing lights on. And our nose lights. Call the cabin. And then once this gets to 3.5, we're going to start our base turn. It's going to be a pretty sharp turn because I'm a little bit, a little bit tight on the corner, but it not be an issue. And we can bring our spoilers back now. Completely forgot they were out. Always forget they're out. <laughs> right, okay. So let's get ready for the base turn here. And this is all going to be manual flight from... Uh, well, from in uh, in a couple of moments, really. Okie dokie. Right, let's get ready for this base turn. Alright, so autopilot is going to be disengaged now and uh, we're going to start our turn going to be a pretty sharp turn to begin with and we're going to have to start descending down as well Minimum. yo thank you very much for the stars whoever that was i will uh, check that out momentarily just need to try and get this uh, under control here.
So I can't see the runway just yet. There's the runway. We've overshot it a little bit, so let's uh, try and uh, get our way ourselves back in. We're a little bit high as well. So uh, overshooting it is probably to be expected because we did take that last turn a little bit too tight. So let's slow ourselves. Let's get ourselves descending a bit quicker here. Um, okay, so we're on the glide slope now. We've got two reds and two whites on the pappy. This is uh, probably not the most stable approach in the world, but um, nevertheless, we're wrangling it in. We've got a little bit of a tailwind, but nothing too great. We're looking good, I think. Right on the glide, so we're a tiny bit low now. And we're down. Full reverses for this one. Woof! <laughs> that was a pretty, uh, pretty firm touchdown there, but I'm not messing about on this runway. It's uh, very short. As you can see, we are approaching the end of it already. Okay, reverses off and manual braking. Murat, greetings. Uh, what else have we got? Darren. <laughs> Darren had no faith, dude. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Nits, and thank you very much for the 50 stars, dude. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. That's, uh, that's very, very kind of you. We made it. Yes, we made it, guys. We made it indeed. That was pretty, uh, pretty firm touchdown. I'm not particularly proud of that one but other than that it was uh, pretty pretty solid I think managed to bring it back wow holy crap there's a lot of people in here <laughs> welcome everybody welcome let's get ourselves turned around here we can uh, disarm our ground spoilers now put our flaps all the way up Turn off our flight director's landing system. Constraints could come off as well. All right. So I think there's a taxiway. Yeah, there's a taxiway just a little bit up here. Woo! <laughs> Holy crap. I uh yeah that was that was that was fun that was so fun like I say the landing was was quite firm quite firm touchdown 536 feet per minute that's probably um hmm yeah I'd probably be getting told off by my uh, maintenance guys if he did that landing in real life but uh other than that I think that was that was pretty solid like we landed nicely on center line in the touchdown zone uh obviously the the runway is covered in snow so I'm not going to mess about trying to, uh, you know, absolutely grease the landing when, you know, if I did that, we probably would have run out of run runway. So Buzz, dude, I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed that. I enjoyed that as well. That was very fun. Yeah, man, really enjoyed that. I love the approach here into Innsbruck. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm glad you did as well. If anyone else is watching as well and they enjoyed that, uh, enjoying the content, do make sure you hit the follow button or if you type in the chat, exclamation point, exclamation point, uh, notify. Uh, that will also have you follow the channel. Alright, I'm trying to do everything at once here. It's not working out too well. 
Uh, we'll leave those lights on, turn the landing lights off, put the lights to taxi, strobes can come off as well. All right, have we got any ground services waiting for us here? We do up here, so let's uh, let's go to that parking spot. In fact, let's just uh, let's do this. I think this guy just spawned in for us. It's so hard to see the uh, <laughs> it's so hard to see the uh, actual parking spot, actual lines because of the snow. Let's just uh, let's just swing around here. Oh god damn! Bit heavy on the brake there. I honestly can't see any lines on the ground at all. We'll park right in front of the main terminal here, though. You can't really go wrong, can you? I think this is a line right here. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I thought this might be a parking spot line here, but it just looks like it's the way it's the light. The light's hitting it. We'll pretend it is. We'll pretend it is. Uh, we need to stop about about here anyway. All right, so that's parking brake set. Uh, APU is now on and available. Uh, so we'll go ahead and turn the engines off. Uh, our taxi lights can come off as well. And uh, yeah, I don't think we're in a proper parking spot here, but again, <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to tell where to park here because the snow has just covered all the lines up. But yeah, guys, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that flight. Anyway, we're going to do one more flight in just a moment. Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. I did really enjoy that approach. That was probably the hardest landing I've done in a very, very long time. Uh, <laughs> 536 feet per minute um, but yeah I mean nevertheless it was extremely enjoyable and uh, that's all that matters in it really so you can see here this is a runway threshold we came in from over here this is where we did our loop around the edge up and round here we turned in uh, probably about here uh, and came back in um, yeah, we landed right in the touchdown zone. Any any later than that would have been quite difficult to actually stop because of all the snow on the runway. Um, as you can see, we rolled on right until the end here. And um, yeah, obviously we used the little backtrack circle to turn around and came in. And we are parked roughly about here where this chopper is, but I couldn't say for sure. <laughs> But yeah, looking at our um, touchdown details here, so the heading that we needed to hit was 78 degrees, which we did hit, which is fantastic. Um, so that's great. Our roll, we had a little bit of a roll, which is not, I mean, it's tiny, but still, we kind of want that to be zero. Um, other than that, centerline deviation was 0.14 feet. So we pretty much nailed the centerline there, which is very nice. Um, so yeah, that's that's good. I'm just trying to make myself feel feel better here. By the way, <laughs> it's not all about landing rate. Um, you know, it was quite a firm landing, but at the end of the day, we landed center line and um, you know relatively level. So at the end of the day, that's that's that comes into what a good landing is as well. Um, it was a bit of a Ryanair landing, but hey ho. <laughs> uh, Mohammed, welcome to the stream. And uh, hello uh, to yourself in Pakistan. Welcome, welcome. All right. So, um, yeah, that's that one done. Before we end this, I'm just going to get a little... Uh, little uh, capture right here with the, uh, with the tower in the background and the snow.
Oops. There we go. All right. Um, Masake and Mahens, thank you guys for the follows. I hope you are both well and having a fantastic Sunday. So we could actually turn the beacon light off as well now. The uh, engines are off. Okay, cool. So let's just power it down and uh, and then we will um, we'll jump on over to Hong Kong. All right, so all these can come off. Food supply oxygen can go off. This can go off. And that is about it in the Airbus. Yeah, cool. We could turn all the lights down as well, but that is going to take forever. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> but how amazing was that, guys? That was very, very fun. Did enjoy that. All right, so let's uh, let's jump on over back to the main menu, and we're just going to do a short flight now. To uh, actually, we've only been live there two hours, haven't we? So uh, maybe we could go for a bit longer. Let's have a look. So let's see what ATC controllers we've got online in Europe at the moment. There was a lot on earlier. I'm absolutely roasting in here today. Um, right, so. Northern Ireland, potentially, potentially. Um, let's see. All right, so first of all, I did want to do something in Hong Kong real quick. So let's just see how long that's going to take, first of all. It shouldn't take long, but let's just see. Um, because this approach is going to be pretty damn cool as well. So I was going to just fly from Hong Kong Kai Tak. So it's five minutes flight. So let's we might as well do that because I think this would be really cool to show you guys this approach. Um, now I'm not fully clued up on all the approach procedures here, but let's just have a look. I think that's what we want. Let's see. Uh, can you do an island flight of Corfu or Northern Ireland? Um, let's um, let's see how long this is going to take first. I mean, it's only going to take what twenty minutes, but let's see. So we've got uh, Northern Ireland. Where was it that uh, Kenny said? Did you say Aldergrove? And then Corfu. So maybe we could do both. Uh, maybe we could do a flight between the two. Uh, I forget where Corfu is though. Is that to Greece? Let me just search. Corfu. Okay, it's... Uh, I guess the airport's not called Corfu. Uh, 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 so hard to see in the night over here. Let's just. I'm just going to have to work this out. Yeah, Corfu is a Greek, a Greek island. I thought it was. Uh... Weather layer off. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can find Greece here. I, I totally forgot where it is. Down here. Uh, do, do, do. Be quite a long flight, actually, so it might not be the best one to do. We go to Mali. Uh, Turkey, CFU, where's CFU? You talking about Corfu or? Let's see, LGKR.
So I don't want to do a super long flight, guys, because I, I don't have too much time left. But if there's something reasonable that we can do. Okay, so that's probably too long. Uh, let me have a let me have a think about it and we'll uh, we'll jump over to Hong Kong. We'll just do that one first because I think you guys are really going to if you enjoyed that last one, this one is even 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 crazier, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, and it, it shouldn't take too long. So let's um, let's set that up and then we can uh, we can decide on where we're going to fly next. OK. So let's just set that as an arrival and we can LGKR. Yeah, got it, Nigel. Thank you very much. Uh, Kirkia. Where's uh, Kirk? How do you say that? It's Kirk Kirkia. Whereabouts is that? All right, let's uh. Let's set this gate. All right, so this is going to be a very, very short flight, guys. But I do want you guys to experience this because it's going to be freaking amazing, to be honest. <laughs> um, right, so let's. We're going to do this in the seven four seven because this is quite a classic approach for a seven four. Well, yeah, it's it's a pretty uh, well done approach in a seven four seven. Uh, back in the day. Yeah, 747s used to fly this pretty regularly. Um, we are going to just do that and that. And that. We're not going to need any, hardly any fuel at all, really. But we need some in. And we'll have quite a, hmm, let's see. We'll put a bit of payload in and we're going to need to move some people out first class, unfortunately. <laughs> Back to the economy. Right. That should do it. All right, cool. Yeah, we're going to use the 747 Andy in this one for sure. We'll just uh, clear this out. All right, this is going to be this is going to be cool, guys. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if you guys know where what Kaitak is. Kaitak is a well, it used to be Hong Kong's main international airport, but they've since closed it down. And uh, it's well known because it's got a very, very um, hair raising approach into uh, one of the runways. So, um, yeah, you'll see what I mean, though. I'm not 100% sure on exactly how to fly it, so I might just mess it up. But I do want to just give it a try because... It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Africa, Mali. May, I mean, I think that's... We've got quite a lot of suggestions here. I mean, I'm thinking Ireland is probably going to be quite a good one to do. Um, somewhere in Ireland. But let's... Actually, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Because it would be quite cool to do a flight uh, with some ATC on at least once tonight. So... Yeah, so we've got no ATC on in the UK, unfortunately. We have got some over Africa. Traffic above 7,000. I forget where Mali actually is, to be honest with you.
If Mali's in this area, that'd be quite cool, but I'm pretty sure it's not because this is mostly Egypt, isn't it? Um... What else have we got? We've got some. Uh, we've got a center controller on in Thailand, Finland as well. Got quite a lot of traffic in South America as well. All right, let's uh, let's crack on with this uh, this approach anyway. Uh, this won't take too long, and then we'll uh, we'll check out something else. All right, so let's just uh, set this to live weather. There we go. It looks like it's quite windy here. <laughs> just saw the sea change to a very dark color, which means that there's a lot of wind. Right, we'll have a, we'll have a look at our next route momentarily, but let's just enjoy this flight in the 747. To begin with, all right, so let's uh, turn our standby power to auto and our battery can come on. Um, this isn't the modded version of the 747, so we are missing a few nice little features, but we shall uh, we'll crack on anyway. It's a very nicely modeled um, aircraft. So let's jump on over to here. Let's just set our position based on the GPS. And we shall just check our route real quick. It is a very short route. We're probably going to be manual flying a lot of this. So I don't need to worry too much about a lot of this stuff. We're going to not derate any of the... Um, not going to derate any of the uh, thrust. We're going to use flaps 15 takeoff. Uh, we'll set our V speeds, which are pretty high. Should be doable though. We've got ILS 13 tuned in. We're not going to fly the ILS, but I think we'll need to use that as some sort of guidance as we get a little bit closer. Um, yeah, and I think that's basically all we need to set up on here because. Yeah, like I say, it's um, it's a default aircraft, so there's not too much going on with the systems. And what is going on here? Have we got a departure runway selected? No, we don't. Okay. Let's choose 25 left. And we'll execute that. I should change this line over here. Hello? Okay, it's not. So, yeah. Anyway, um, let's get the APU started. Could turn on external power as well. Completely uh, forgot about that one. Oh, right. It's been a while since I've been in the 747. So, this should be interesting. Uh, nav lights can come on. Logo lights can come on. There we go. Uh, let's turn on a couple of extra lights here as well. Had your tea break in the back of... I did a tea break in one of the stands at the cockpit of the BA-747 back in 2000. That's amazing, dude. That is amazing. I've never been in the 747, unfortunately, and I'm absolutely wounded that I will probably never get to fly in the 747 now. So, very sad. <laughs> but yeah, man, that is absolutely awesome. So what, you were probably sat back here, right? Absolutely amazing, dude. Okay. Not sure what's going on with my mouse, why it's like that either, but hey ho. Um, all right, so our APU is started up, so we'll set the APU generators on, and it looks like they've actually fixed quite a lot of the um, interface up here as well. Very cool. This livery, amazing though, right? This is a classic Cathay Pacific livery. 
absolutely beautiful. All right, let's uh, let's not drag this out too much. Let's get on the way here. So, Eric, thank you very much for the follow. Hope you're well. Welcome on board. How long did it take to download Flight Simulator? Quite a long time. I left it going overnight, so I can't really tell you exactly how long. Um, but, yeah, a decent amount of time. All right, so let's turn our beacon lights on. And we're going to... We're going to start pushing back now and uh, get the engine started. So, um, in fact, before I do that, I've not flown the 747 since I've got this controller here. So, I'll just need to amend this a little bit. So, I'm just going to make a duplicate profile here. Mm -mm -mm. So I'll need to just set up the Thrall 2 axis. Uh, oh, actually, how am I going to do this? So I'll need to set this to X. Uh, reverse okay and then throttle three axis this one throttle r x i believe it is no that's not working um You know, 7472 Barbados. Um, incredible planes. Alan, I'm very jealous. <laughs> very jealous, dude. That's absolutely amazing. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. And just the final one. So I just need to make sure this is set up so it's going to control all four engines. Otherwise, uh, we're going to have some issues. Uh. Wait, have I done this wrong? I have, haven't I? Left axis X, left axis X. Let me just check this. Hello. Uh, 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 uh. Wait, this has got all four set. Oh, okay. Never mind, ignore me. Um, let's just check the default. Left axis Y and left axis X. Okay. All right, cool. So that should all be sorted. Beautiful. There we go. So now if we come back to here, we should have all of the thralls working. And we've got reverse as well. Okay, that's not exactly how I want it though. Let me just go in here and just set this to... Something like that, I think works okay. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful, okay, cool.
Below is crew quarters for cabin crew and galleys for food. So on New York and Cape Town back to LLHR. Yeah, mate. 747. Absolutely brilliant beast. Justin and Eric, sorry I missed your notifications, but thank you very much for following. I hope you're both well and having a fantastic weekend. All right. So let's get underway here. Um, we're not going to do a long flight here. This is going to be very short, but it's just going to be a bit of fun. Um, probably only going to climb to about 4,000 feet. And uh, yeah, it's going to be very simple, really. Um, right, so let's get these engines all started up. So we're going to go for three and four first. Uh, probably should turn the fuel bumps on as well, shouldn't I? Don't need those on. Don't need those on. Just the uh, wing. Oh. Oh, dear. What has happened? Our APU has gone off. That's a problem. Uh, James, thank you very much for the follow. I have had issues with this before. Um, let's just put a bit more fuel into these main tanks. And into the center wing tank as well. Right, we'll start the APU again. Coming online. Should be available pretty rapid. It doesn't take that long to actually start up on this. can hear it starting up. There we go. That was weird. All right, let's start engines four and three. Let's, uh, oops, there we go. Wait for our N2s to come up. And uh, start the fuel flow. Unfortunately, the livery is uh, reversed on this side of the aircraft just due to a bug in the game at the moment. Uh, Sims just stopped responding because I plugged because uh, I turned my controller on to give it one moment. There we go. All right, so that's uh, engine three and four started and stabilized. Let's start engines one and two. So just waiting for N. Uh, I think that's is I think this is end one indication. Uh, so we'll turn those fuel valves on. All right. So for takeoff, we'll just turn off the. Oh, actually, you can't do it on this. I forget. Normally in uh, a Boeing, you would turn this bottom screen off for takeoff because it will light up then if anything goes wrong with the aircraft. But in this one. Does not work. Where is where? Uh, we're in Hong Kong at the moment. We're flying 
well, very short amount of distance to Hong Kong, basically. <laughs> uh, we're flying into Kai Tak, a closed down airport, which is, um, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty stunning airport. Or well, pretty stunning approach. Uh, Jamie as well. Thank you very much for the follow on Facebook and Scruffy. I don't know if you're watching. I don't think I'm actually live on YouTube right now, but appreciate the subscribe over on YouTube. Thank you very much. Welcome to the stream. All right, so that's all four engines now started. Let us release the parking brake and we can get some pushback. Uh, set the um, speed brakes for takeoff and auto brake to reject the takeoff as well. Should have a pushback tug coming in. And uh, we are going to get pushed. Which way do we need to go here? This is our runway here. And yeah, we need to go to the right if possible. Yes, okay. That's our runway. Let's get turned. How long is this guy taking? There we go. All right, so let's uh, tell this guy to push to the right. Can we go to flight deck spring water, please? Yes, Nigel. Oh. Oh, well, there's another aircraft there. Maybe I... Maybe I initiated that turn a little bit early there. I'm sorry about the catering truck. That guy just got... Uh, destroyed by the engines, but... I'm trying to make this a little bit snappy. I'm not going to try and be too realistic and too anal about things in this one. I just want to uh, give this a go. These, uh, these tower blocks look... Really strange from a distance here in China. I've not done much flying in China on this, especially in the city, but... Hong Kong is such an amazing looking area. Okay, so I think we can probably end the pushback there. This thing has a huge turning circle, so... Uh... So let's end pushback there, and uh, yeah, let's um, let's get going. Slowly does it. Good evening, Dave. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're well. Smoggy, welcome. I hope you guys are well. Welcome to the chat. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Oh, Smoggy. Smoggy actually uh, hosted me on Facebook. Thank you very much for that, Smoggy. Appreciate that. Sorry, I don't always have the um, the Facebook uh, Creator Studio open, so sometimes I miss those. So I do apologize, but uh, thank you very much for the, uh, the viewer host. That's uh, amazing. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I hope you had a good stream, Smoggy. Nigel, uh, isn't there one of their runways built on water? Yes, that is correct, Nigel. It's actually closed now, that airport. I think the one you're referring to is Kai Tak, which is actually where we're going to fly to right now. We're actually going to do a bit of a, a visual approach into Kai Tak. Uh, and it's well known for having some pretty insane... Uh, flyovers of a lot of the buildings it's uh yeah it's pretty hair raising okay so let's uh let's just take a right turn here you just tried landing a uh, aircraft on an aircraft carrier but your plane got washed oh dear <laughs> that's unfortunate what what aircraft did you try and land on the aircraft carrier 
Done that with a night bumpy landing. <laughs> yeah, man, this should be interesting. Be interesting indeed. All right, so approaching the runway here. Let's get some lighting on. All right. Okay, and we're going to get straight off here, guys, because uh, it's only a short flight, so we might as well crack on. Not exactly on center line here, but like I say, we're just doing this for a bit of a, a bit of fun. Nothing too serious right now. Not like my last fly, anyway. That was a little bit more serious. All right. V one rotates. Oh my god, guys! <laughs> Positive right gear up. I forgot to put my flaps down, dudes. <laughs> you can tell I'm not used to flying the 747. I haven't flown it in ages. Completely forgot to put my flaps down, so... Um... So, yeah. That was a bit of a weird takeoff. But hey, oh, let's. Uh, I'm gonna try and probably manually fly most of this, to be honest. Uh, why? Are we, what is going on here? Why can't I turn these modes off? Hello. What the? Okay, there we go. Right, let's uh, let's do a bit of a a left turn here. So we're not going to go too high. I think I'm probably going to stay roughly around four thousand feet. Um, so yeah, we're going to probably stay around where we are currently. I'm going to probably try and level off, get this thing trimmed out. In quite a tight turn here, and <laughs> my flight plan is a little bit of a mess right now, but let's just, uh, let's just follow it on. Uh, we've not got far to go anyway, so we should be visual pretty, pretty soon. What a beast, though. What a beast. Absolutely love the 747. All right, so I'm trying to get eyes on the airport currently. I think, I think it's somewhere there. Is that it there? I can't quite tell. Try to spot the airport. I think it's somewhere. Surprised I can't see it from there, actually. I think it's right here, maybe. Maybe. All right. Okay. Let's let's just. Why is this not letting me disengage? That's so weird. Twenty-five hundred. 
Ah, what is it doing? Oh, it's so weird. I'm probably just not used to it. I'm probably just doing things wrong, to be fair, but... I'm just going to put autopilot on for now, just so I can uh, sort of get to the right spot. Yo, Charlie, and uh, that's it. Thank you very much for following. I hope you're well. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. In fact, no. There's Charlie and there's James and uh, Nishwan as well. Thank you all for the follows. I hope you're well, and I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Welcome to stream. All right, so let's see if we can spot this airport right now. All the buildings are rendering in, so it's making... Oh, there we go. There's the airport right there. Okay, cool. All right, let's disengage the autopilot then and bring ourselves around this way. I'm gonna start descending now. And I'm actually just gonna turn auto throttle off. And I definitely didn't mean to mean to put that amount of throttle in, but. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen the approach before. I just, um, yeah, I just couldn't get couldn't get visual there for a moment. So I believe I need to come in sort of roughly this way towards this area. So let's try that. I'm actually quite a bit too high here so I'm just going to swing myself out to the right and then come back in that way okay All right, then let's swing back around. We are losing some speed as well, which is nice. A very sharp turn for a 747. Probably not the most uh, technically perfect approach here, but... I think I can forgive myself. We'll go for auto brake three and I'll just arm the spoiler, it's still armed. Okay. Right, okay, so we're looking a bit better now. We're probably gonna have to make an extremely sharp turn again. Alright, where's the checkerboard? So basically what we're looking for now, guys, there we go. We're aiming for this checkerboard right here. Oh, I did not mean to do that. All right, so we're at actually at quite a good altitude here, but this is going to be an extremely sharp turn. <laughs> and we're very fast as well, we're extremely fast. Um, oh my God, guys. I am completely forgetting about everything here. I haven't put my flaps out or anything. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, we're going to have to go around on this one, guys, I'm afraid. But we're not going to do your usual go around because I'm... <laughs> Oh dear, I was so distracted to try to find the airport, I, I completely forgot to put flaps in or anything. This is uh, kind of embarrassing, I'm not going to lie. Alright, we're basically just going to do a loop around, we'll get configured and then we'll come back in for the 
with a visual approach. Absolutely wild though, isn't it, Andy? <laughs> like, imagine this in real life. It's absolutely crazy. Like, if you want to see some pictures, I'll bring some up actually after, after, after we've done this, but if you have a look on Google, if you just Google Kai Tak Airport, um, there's some absolutely amazing pictures. All right, so we've got flaps one out and then we'll, we'll go for flaps five and then flaps 10. Try not to climb too much. Keep that nose down. Okay, right, looking a bit better this time. Let's go for flaps 20. All right, let's see where we are. Okay, so we want to swing back around and come in kind of to the left of this building, I believe. I'm so lost without my charts. Like, <laughs> if I had a chart for this, like, I looked everywhere to try and find an approach chart for this, um approach i looked everywhere trying to find an approach chart like an old approach chart for it but i just couldn't find anything unfortunately um you know if i had an approach chart i'd be much um i'd find it much easier to um kind of chart this out and make sure that i was doing the correct uh pathing David, thank you very much for the follow. Chris as well, I'm not sure if I thanked you. Nick, uh, Dario, and uh, Arvid. Everybody, thank you very much for your follows. I appreciate that. Uh, approach from their seaside towards land. Yeah. That is where I'm aiming for, yeah. I'm going to try and aim to come in from, well, here really, which is obviously the sea. And then coming in to the left of this big tower and then to the right. And uh, I am suddenly climbing. Keep forgetting to trim this thing out. <laughs> I'm too used to flying the A320. Let's try this again then. So we're looking pretty good now. We... I'll drop... Wait, what is going on with this screen right now? 8,800. Definitely not right. <laughs> we have got a little bit of a... Um, a little, uh, 17 knot wind coming from 012. I think this runway... Why is this runway? Let's just check. I think this runway is like, we're probably going to end up with a bit of a tailwind here. Yeah, so this is uh, 130. Ah, no, actually no, this might be a slight crosswind even, but I'm terrible at working out. Um, yeah, so we're actually going to have a bit of a crosswind landing here, guys. <laughs> Right, okay, so that's looking a bit better. I'm just going to pull the throttles back whilst we uh, make a little bit more of a, a descent down. Used to work on tanker vessels in the 70s. We are delivering jet fuel to this airport, moored at the base of the runway. Planes flew over the ship on landing. Awesome. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, dude, I mean, I bet that was absolutely amazing to, uh, to work at this airport. Absolutely crazy approach. Right, let's just try and lose quite a bit more speed now. I want to get fully configured.
Okay, so flaps 25. And flaps 30. Okay, so I need to see... We need to try and find that checkerboard hill again. I think it's just behind this group of buildings here. In front of us, like straight ahead. Let's see, can I see the checkerboard? Yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. So I kind of want to keep this elevation for a little bit until we at least approach the turn. God, this is going to be difficult. We're going to have a little bit of a tailwind, actually. Well, yeah, it's kind of like a cross tailwind, isn't it? This is Hong Kong indeed, Kenny. Yep, still here. Uh, we're just about to turn on to final right now. Oh, God, this is going to be rough. Sure. All right, we're looking good. Gear down. Yeah, we've got about a 90 degree turn here to make. Right at the right time, yes, Gates. Just about to attempt to make a landing into um, Kaitak. Yeah, I'm a bit high, I think. My God. Versus on there, a little bit of a weird bounce there. The uh, 747 is a little bit of a weird one to uh, 